Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. Real quick, I just wanted to say I'm really sorry that this episode took so long to get out. It was supposed to be up yesterday, which was Saturday. It's when I did start recording it. It started to take way longer to put together than I thought it was going to. And then um, I did have my sister come over so that she could help me put up my Christmas tree and get some Christmas decorations going. That took up a huge majority of the day. I was finally able to finish this episode, but it wasn't until very, very late last night. I don't even think I got off until sometime this morning. Um, so I am sorry that it wasn't up yesterday, but I really hope that whoever comes to watch it is able to learn something. Um, and thank you for, for stopping by. Thank you. It really does mean a lot. Um, and so now you guys can go ahead and enjoy the episode. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys. Welcome back to MOE. This is going to be episode 19, I think. I think we're on episode 19 now. That's crazy. So before we get started here, as always, I just want to say thank you guys so much for all the support on the videos. It really does mean a lot to me. Thank you. Uh, if you end up liking this video, you could do me a huge favor and go ahead and hit that like button and consider subscribing as well. Our channel's really, really been growing the, the past week, guys. It's awesome. Thank you so much for that. Um, another thing I want to bring up, again, um, and I, you guys have heard me say it in a couple of videos, but to anybody that new that's just coming in, um, I have to apologize about my mic. I'm really, really sorry. It's all I have right now. I know it's really, really horrid. Um, I do plan on getting a new one fairly soon, so, you know, fingers crossed that that's able to happen. I'm, I'm really, really sorry about it, guys. I truly am. So in the last episode, we took our guy out. We took Ozai out, our gold wa uh, warrior. I can't talk right now. And uh, we leveled him up a bit. Now... In the, I had so many plans for this episode that I really, really wanted to do, but it came to my attention that there's a couple of resources uh, in the game that people may not know exactly how to get, um, and they may not know exactly what they're for. So this episode is going to be about um, a lot of the flora and like flower things that you can find. Each biome has their own like unique ones. Um, the first one I want to talk about is mulberry leaves. Okay. So the mulberry leaf, you can actually find, um, in this biome, I'm fairly sure. certain. I'm going to go and I'm going to find a plant so that I can show you guys exactly what it looks like. So we actually haven't gone very far. Our base is right there. Now, mulberry leaves, you can actually get just out of these big bushes. It's kind of just like a chance thing that you'll get them. I don't know if you'll get them out of the small ones, but I know you can get them out of the bigger ones see here let's just harvest a couple of these and see what we get there we go that big one right there gave us some just test this one out here as well now you can i don't know if you can get them in other biomes but i know you can get them in this biome here let me open up my map um for anybody that's you know, interested we are in the biome that's just kind of like around the mountain here but that's where you get the mulberry leaves now mulberry leaves are used as food in the silkworm plaque so this right here is a silkworm plaque. This is where you want to put the mulberry leaves. You can put them in here along with silkworms, um, and they will produce silkworm cocoons. Now, you can get silkworm cocoons um, in just kind of like a... It's, it's like a rare drop you can get when you're picking flowers and stuff. Um, but to get silkworm cocoons, you need silkworms. And to get silkworms, you have to catch the silkworm moth. Now, to find a silkworm moth, the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to craft this sweep net. Um, it's just a large bug net, basically. Once you have the sweep net, you want to find these little uh, groups of what looks like butterflies. They're usually flying over some of these bushes. Um, it does look like they respawn in the exact same location. So if you're having a hard time finding some, there is some right here where I'm standing. I can't read the uh, coordinates down there on the bottom because, unfortunately, that's where my recording stuff is. I'm going to have to move that. But, yeah, um, this is exactly where at least one of them is. And then you want to go ahead and you want to attack them yeah. with the net. There we go. And you can see we got three silkworm moths. Now, I do know of another location. We are up here by our old base, right here along the edge of the lake. Here is where you can find another set of butterflies. Tell you what, the hitbox. There we go. All right, so we got some more there. 
Um, unfortunately, those are the only two um, exact spawn locations I know offhand. I haven't really been paying too much attention to them as I've been wandering around. Um, we just got into the Silk Moths not too long ago. So if you're out in your world and you happen to find some, just make sure you mark it down on your map so that you remember where to get to them. If and when you get to the point where you need Silk. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to do, guys, is bring those moths to these flower beds. And you can see we have five here, so we're actually going to split them. Put two in here. And you can see here, after about an hour and 20 minutes, they're going to produce us some silkworms. I believe it's one worm per moth. I believe. Although, let's see here. We're going to test it right now. If I split this, we simply put a moth in here. Yes, so you're going to get one worm per moth. So we'll go ahead and we'll put those two in there. And after about an hour and 20 minutes, they're going to produce silkworms. Um, but for all intents and purposes of this video, we're just going to spawn... Um, some silkworms in so I can show you guys exactly what they do. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So we're just going to take a silkworm. I believe we only need one to show you guys what this does. And you take the silkworm and you put the silkworm into this plaque here. And after another hour and 20 minutes, you'll get silkworm cocoons. So the silkworm cocoons, now what you do with those... Silkworm cocoons can be used down here on the loom for making silk. Now silk is used for making silk cloth on the loom. Now I do not have that unlocked because it is a level 55, so unfortunately I cannot show you that any further. But that right there is pretty much everything involving the mulberry leaf. So. The next plant that I want to talk about in today's episode is honeysuckle. Now, it says here, an important crop for making medicine and alcohol. Generally, you can find it in the north jungle, and you can also plant it. So let me show you really quick where you can find honeysuckle and what it looks like. Here we are in the northern jungle, guys, and I just wanted to show you really quick. This right here is what honeysuckle looks like. I'm going to go ahead and harvest it. And you can actually find them all over this uh, this little valley here. Now, I haven't done a whole lot of running around up here in the north. You can see, uh, I think that's another plant right there. Let's run over here really quick. And I'll show you on the map where I am. Oh, yeah, here we go. See, there's some right here. It's going to be a lot easier to find these uh, plants on foot, guys. There was one thing, um, peas. I'm going to show you where to find peas after we're done with honeysuckle. And, like, my poor fiance is just horrible at finding peas. But you can see here, they're just kind of dotted around the place. There's a copper mine right there. Let me open up the map and show you where we're at. So the best place that I've been able to find it so far is just kind of in here in this valley, right next to this copper mine. And then up here is that big field we found a couple of uh, episodes ago when I was showing off uh, this biome up here. But right here I've had a lot of luck just finding uh, honeysuckle. Just kind of dotted around a lot of the, big, uh, the bigger bushes here. There's some right there, I think. Let's come over here and grab this. And there's another one right there, I think, too. But yeah, you can see they're just kind of around. There's another one right there. So they are pretty frequent. Come up here and you'll probably find a good amount of them. Now, honeysuckle is actually used here in the fermenting barrel. You can use honeysuckle to make high-quality big coup and high-quality small coup. Here in the Medicine Cauldron, you can actually use it to make the Keen Sight Medicine. Here in the Mortar and Pestle, guys, it can be used to make incense. And here in the Pill Cauldron, you can use it to make the Keen Sight Pill. And lastly, guys, when you're out and you're harvesting honeysuckle, you can actually get seeds for it, and you can bring them back and you can plant them. Um, you cannot plant them on your crude planters. They do have to be in at least a common planter. Your soil porosity needs to be at least 70%. You can see here down on the seeds, it says yield high, soil nutrients required high, soil porosity required 70% or more. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plant these here. Okay. Oh. Evidently I missed one. There we go. Now, um, I know I, I mentioned it in my crop video, but just in case uh, anybody missed that one or anybody that's watching this did not see that one, in order to bring your soil porosity up, you need to have a hoe. 
All right, now I happen to have an iron hoe. You just go ahead and you just whack at it, and you'll see that the hoe will actually bring the soil porosity up. You can see here, this one here is zero. Just keep hacking away at it, and it'll bring it up. And then the next thing that we want to make sure that we do, that one has no water, is we want to make sure that we water our honeysuckle here. So let's go ahead and let's water these. I have the large watering barrel, so this is going to bring it up 500 points each time I hit it. I don't know if it's intended, but this stack of 10 has actually lasted us the entire time, and we have not had to refill them. I'm going to take a guess and say that that's a bug. But there we go. That is, at least anyway, everything I know about honeysuckle. The next plant I want to talk about, guys, is peas. Now, peas can be found down here in the starter area. I have a spot marked down here on my map. It is not an exact location of where peas are. The peas can be found all over this area. I will show you on the map where I'm at. You can find them just all over the place right here. It's a good place to find peas. And I'm going to show you guys what they look like. Now, the best way to find them is actually to be on foot, okay? If we try running through with horses and it's just, they're so little, they're so hard to see. But you can see here how, um, if you look around, you can see like bundles of, or rather, groups of bushes. Now, if you come up to these groups of bushes and you start wandering around them, you'll find these little plants right here. This is peas, okay? I'm going to go ahead and use the wrong tool. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and we're going to grab them, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run around, and I'm just going to show you guys the best way to find peas. You just kind of wander around these bushes, all right? Move from, you know, groups to group. And you will find peas, just kind of dotted around them, almost very, very similarly to the honeysuckle. You can see here we are a little bit of a distance away from my original P marker. And that's only because, like I said, you can find them just kind of all over this valley here. Just dotted around these big groups of bushes. And we'll get this last one here. Alrighty, and that right there, guys, is how you find the peas. Now, peas can be used... Here in the fermenting barrel, they can be used to make the coarse big coo, common big coo, and high quality big coo. And it can also be used to make soybean paste. Here in the medicine cauldron, it can be used to make the basic, intermediate, and advanced horse tranquilizers. And here, guys, in the clay hearth, it can be used to make pea porridge. Now, pea porridge is probably the most important thing um, that you can use peas for. This will actually um, bring up your heat protection. So this can make it so that you can last longer in the desert biome that is to the northwest. Right. And lastly, guys, you cannot get seeds for peas, so you can't actually plant them. At least, not that we've been able to find. Um, I did not find any peas on my own. I have not gathered any. And... There actually, I did take a look, there is no such thing as pea seeds. Um, I don't know why it's not showing up even peas, but yeah, you can't even get, like, pea seeds are not a thing. I can try and type the word seed. I don't believe pea seeds are a thing. Nope, it doesn't look like it. Although I have yet to find cotton seeds, that's new. Yeah, you can't get pea seeds, so unfortunately gathering them is the only way to get them right now. Alright guys, so the next plant that I wanted to talk about is not wheat herb here. Uh, you can see here it says, an important crop for making baiju and medicine can be obtained through planting. So really quick, I'm going to show you guys where you can find it. And that's down here in the starter area, guys, um, the first biome when you come in. Now the knotweed herb is actually this plant right here with the pink flowers on it. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna harvest it here. There you go, you can see we got some knotweed herb. So that's what it looks like. You can also get knotweed herb seeds and you can plant them. You can see here, if I hover over the seed guys, it says they have a low yield, 
soil nutrients required is low and the soil porosity required is anything more than 30 percent so really what that means is you can actually plant them here in the crude planters your soil porosity just needs to be as it said better than 30 percent but the fact that they are low means that you can plant them in your your crude planters so you don't have to have the upgraded planters for those now what can knotweed herb be used for well in the fermenting barrel it can be used to make the coarse big coup and the coarse small coup here in the medicine cauldron it can be used to make the golden medicine and the keen sight medicine here in the modern pestle, it can be used to make the Advanced Mount Experience Pill 1. And here in the Pill Cauldron, it can be used to make the Treasure Pill and the Keen Sight Pill. And so far as I'm aware, that's the most I've discovered you can do with Nutweed Herb. The next plant I wanted to mention today was the Clove. Now you can see here in the description, it says an important crop for making Baiju and medicine can be obtained through planting. So that does mean that you can get seeds for it, but let me show you really quick what it looks like and where you can find it. So the biome that you're actually going to find this stuff in is the mountain biome, right where we've actually decided to set up camp. So pretty much this biome that goes all the way up in here to the uh, left side of the mountain. You can find clove in there. This right here is what the plant looks like. We're gonna go ahead and harvest it. And as I mentioned, you can get seeds. You can see here, the seeds say their yield is common, soil nutrients required is low, soil porosity required is anything greater than 50%. So that does mean they cannot be planted in the crude planters. They are going to have to be planted in either the common planter or the exclusive planter. Now, what cloves can be used for is this meat and vegetable porridge here in the clay hearth. Now, if you read the description for clove, it says that it's an important crop for making baiju and medicine. But I checked the pill cauldron, I checked the medicine cauldron, and I checked the fermenting barrel guys, and clove is not listed at, at any of the ingredients for any of the bijous or the medicines. So I'm not sure if that means it's a bijou I do not have unlocked or medicine that I do not have unlocked yet. Remember, I'm not max level. But for right now, the only thing I'm able to find on clove is this meat and veggie porridge. So the next plant that I wanted to mention is this uh, Noto ginseng here. You can see here it says an important crop for making medicine. Generally, you can find it in the south jungle and you can also plant it. So that does mean that you can get seeds for it. The seed here says low quality, yield low, soil nutrients required low, soil porosity required 30% or more. Now that does mean you can plant them in the crude planter. Really quick here, let me show you guys where you can get Noto Ginseng. So you can see here guys, we're just down here in the southern jungle right there outside of the starter area that's the salt mine that's right next to the not so neutral city i'm just up the hill here this flower right here is the flower that you're looking for i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna collect it cool. and now i'm gonna show you what we can use noto ginseng for back at base here in the medicine cauldron it can be used to make the gold wound medicine the Heavenly pill for the horse and the keen sight medicine. Here in the mortar and pestle, guys, not Noto ginseng can be used to make incense, but it does have to be of common quality. So you're going to have to take the low quality seeds, put them in your crude planter, and get a common seed to then plant in the uh, common planter in order to get the common Noto ginseng so that you can make the incense. And here in the pill cauldron, guys, for the treasure pill, you're going to also need common noto ginseng. And for the keen sight pill, you will need high quality noto ginseng. So you'll have to take your common seeds and put them into your uh, exclusive planter to get the higher quality seeds there. And so far as I've been able to tell, guys, that is everything that I've seen that you can do with the noto ginseng. 
Alright guys, so the next crop that I want to talk about here is the sand onion. You can see here in the description it says, important crop to make food can be obtained through planting. Sand onion can only be planted in sandy land. So that does mean that you can get seeds for it. Now the seeds over here say yield high, soil nutrients required many, soil porosity required 90% or more, you can only plant it in sandy land. Now I have not tested guys to find out if you can take your exclusive planter and put it in the desert biome somewhere and plant sand onion seeds in it. Um, but I am going to take a guess and say you need to at least find a farm in the desert to put the sand onions in. Now really quick, I will show you where you, now these obviously do spawn in the desert biome to the northwest, but I will show you on the map where you can actually get some without having to go into the desert and worry about your heat depleting. So right here, guys, I'm going to show you on the map where we're at, right here along this ridge, which is actually outside of the heat zone for the uh, desert area. You can find these sand onions. These plants right here are the plants you're looking for. You can see there, we got all, a whole bunch of them. I don't know, you probably can't see it very well up there at the top of the hill near those deer. There was one just behind me that I actually harvested. And we've got this one here. And if you just run along here, you'll actually find a couple more. But really quick, guys, let's go back to base so I can show you what it's used for. The that I don't actually have it unlocked yet, but the sand onion can be used to make sand onion and fish porridge, which is unlocked at level 60. So the next plant that I wanted to tell you guys about today is the Dragon's Blood Resin. You can see here it says, an important crop for making baiju and medicine can be obtained through planting. So that does mean that we can get seeds for it. Dragon's blood resin seeds yield high, soil nutrients required high, soil porosity required 90% or higher. Now I do believe this means you're going to need to plant it in the exclusive planter. I don't think it can be planted in the common planter. But really quick guys, let me show you what the plant looks like and where you can find it. So dragon's blood resin can be found in the swamp biome, guys, down here, where the uh, poisonous area is. You can find a couple of them just outside of it, though. Now, if we go into this water here, we are going to start taking some poison damage. But you can see over here, there's a couple of these plants. Now, these plants right here are the plants that you're looking for. We're going to go ahead and we're just going to harvest them really quick. You can, like I said, you can get a couple of them uh, right here along the shoreline. You can see, though, that my poison resistance is dropping. And there we go. My screen is going to start to fill up with green here. But we're just going to grab a couple of those, and we're going to get out of here. And now, we're going to go back to base so I can show you what Dragon's Blood Resin is used for. And here, guys, just like the uh, sand onion and fish porridge, I don't actually have it unlocked yet, but it will be used to craft the Heavenly Pill, which is going to be crafted in, it says medicine. I'm going to assume that's going to be in the Pill Cauldron, though. Oh, yep, it does say it right there, Building Required Pill Cauldron. And that one is also unlocked at level 60. So the very last thing that I wanted to mention here was I wanted to talk about the False Daisies and the Cotton. Um... I don't actually know exactly where those can be found, guys. I feel like I have come across false daisies before, but I ran kind of all over the map trying to figure out where it was that I found them, and I can't figure it out. Um, it does say here can be obtained through planting, so you can obtain the seeds. I don't know that I have any false daisy seeds to show you guys um, what kind of crop requirements they are. Um, really quick, though, I could get some. Let me see. Here we go. Let's just... Oh, I do have... I thought I had a false daisy seed. That seed looks very familiar. Let's just spawn one in. Okay, I, I did. I had some down here, guys. Okay, so false daisy seeds yield common. Soil nutrients required is low. Soil porosity required is 50% or higher. So that right there, I do believe, means it's going to have to be planted in at least the common planter, guys. Um, and you can see, obviously, soil porosity, you're going to have to make sure is at least 50% or higher. Now, for the cotton here, again, I don't know where to find it. I have not come across it yet. If anybody that watches this video knows where to find 
the false daisy or the cotton, please go ahead and put that down in the comments so that, uh, you know, other people will know. So cotton seeds here, it says yield high, soil nutrients required is high, soil porosity required is 70% or higher. I do believe, guys, that means it's going to have to be planted in the exclusive planter. Okay, now the very, very last plant, and this might not be all the plants in the, in the game, guys. This is everything that I've come across so far. Um, but the very last plant that I wanted to talk about today is the wildflowers. Now, wildflowers, you can find them everywhere. Um, I'm pretty sure that wildflowers are just kind of like a, a chance drop off of, like, any plant, really. You just, you get them everywhere. They can be used for a multitude of things. You need them to make, like, the basic horse fodder. Um, I think you could use them with some of the fertilizers. Um, but wildflowers, guys, are not really biome-specific. You can pretty much get them everywhere. And guys, I know that that's probably going to cut the episode incredibly short, um, and I'm really sorry about that, but I am going to call the episode here for this one. I hope that uh, this helped some people in, in finding a lot of these resources. I know that my poor fiancé was having a hard time finding some of them, um, but thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out. I really hope everybody has a fantastic rest of the day. Uh, I hope that you all come back for the next episode, and until then, bye guys!